not every day that you can span two continents across a frozen river, but in Magnitogorsk, you can do just that. So, at the moment I'm in Asia, and five, four, three, two, one, and I'm back in Europe. Well, it doesn't feel too different. I wonder if the food will be a bit more bland over this side there. Magnitogorsk's Friendship House is the best place to see what a melting pot this city really is. There's been a programme running here for more than a decade, and it aims to give Magnitogorsk's various ethnic and cultural groups a place to gather, practice some traditional music, and celebrate their heritage. And I found out that some of the friendliest of all were the Tartar Ladies' Choir. So long, Dem. Oh. oh my gosh. What am I going to do? Dance and we'll watch. Good boy. Wait. I don't know what to do to the end of this. It says Spanish. Grab your partner, go see her. I get to get back. It'd get you fit, wouldn't it, as well? I'd just about got my breath back, but the ladies weren't finished with me. I was about to have my first lesson on the traditional Tartar mouth harp, the kubis. Right, OK, so up here, and over there, I think. Oh, gosh. Uh-huh. Yes? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This is much harder than it looks. It really is. So I can break all my teeth. OK. Oh, no. Die. The melody doesn't sound right. He's biting it. As I was officially now an honorary Tartar, I headed off to the centre's main auditorium, where a group of local Cossacks were rehearsing. The Cossacks were originally warriors who settled on the borders of Russia to defend it from its enemies. But these guys had some pretty powerful voices, too. I was joined by Yelena, the director of Friendship House, who told me that more than a thousand people regularly pass through its doors. This city needs our work very much. We are a symbol of unity. All the people here sing and dance on the same stage, irrespective of the color of their skin or the shape of their eyes. And we are doing it happily, with love for our people. I was enjoying hearing the Cossacks do their stuff, but then it turned out they were a little light in the bass section. Do we have time to repeat it once more? <coughs> I'd spent several days within the city limits, but it was time to explore what else Magnitogorsk had to offer. And just an hour away, it's not difficult to see why this is becoming a really popular tourist spot. It was pretty inspiring watching the people flying down the slopes all around me. And with the promise of a free introductory snowboard lesson, I went to get kitted up. It's my baby for the day. Hit the slopes. There was just one slight problem. The last time I'd been anywhere near a piste was when I was five years old. And it wasn't long before I was remembering all the reasons that I hadn't been back. But my instructor Vasil assured me that once I got on the board, I'd be fine. But then he could already ride like this. I'm sure that most people take to this sport like a duck to water. 
But it seemed to me that you needed the coordination of a ballerina just to get the thing moving, and then the strength of a bear to control it. Which is why this happened rather a lot. But at last, with my teacher's temper almost as an end, I finally got something right. Well, after 25 years without ever being on a ski slope, I don't think that's too bad for a day's work. I'll tell you what, I think I need a long hot bath. The scenery up here in the mountains was stunning, and I was really looking forward to seeing more of the region. And it turns out that there are parts with a distinctly European flavour. Now, one thing I wasn't expecting when I came to Magnitogorsk was to find that both France and Germany were in easy reach. But on this map, you've got Berlin, you've got Leipzig, you've even got Paris, just a few hours away. And as my French is a bit rusty, I think we'll take a little Gallic trip today. How is he? All of these towns were settled by Cossacks after the Napoleonic Wars and named to commemorate victories in the campaign. Paris is around 100 kilometers from Magnitogorsk. And before long, those useful phrases from school were all flooding back. Zut alors. Où est la piscine? Un croissant, s'il vous plaît. That should be enough, shouldn't it, I think? Sadly, when we arrived, there was actually no sign of men in stripy jumpers riding bicycles. But there was one very tall surprise. Well, you can't get more authentically Paris than that. The Eiffel Tower in the middle of Russia. And the Champs-Élysées must be around here somewhere. It turns out it wasn't. But they did have their own, slightly smaller version of the Louvre in the shape of the town's local museum. Curator Arena gave me a tour and told me about some of their old Cossack superstitions. So this is like an old 19th century bed and cradle, I guess, yeah? The cradle was covered with a sheet or curtain because it was thought that if the baby was not in the cradle, it was necessary to cover the bed with something. Otherwise, some evil forces would creep into the cradle and the baby would cry or fall ill. Irina showed me round the 19th century Cossack living quarters they'd recreated, and it was easy to tell how proud she was of her small town's history. Paris might not have been very French, but it definitely had a real je ne sais quoi. I was really in the mood to find some more of Magnitogorsk's hot spots, which isn't easy in the middle of winter. But where there's a car and a bottle of antifreeze, there's a way. It's almost like coming out of the snow and into the tropics. But this is actually a lemonarium, which is just outside Magnitogorsk. And they grow all sorts of tropical fruit here. But, of course, what they're famous for is these. Look at the size of these lemons. They're just like grapefruits. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, can you imagine the amount of gin and tonics you'd need to go with one of those? It was pretty obvious these were no ordinary fruits, but these lemons are a real communist success story from the former Soviet Republic of Uzbekistan. They were created by accident when a group of Uzbek scientists were told to breed a new form of lemon to celebrate Lenin's birthday. They crossed to ordinary breeds and it produced this unusual giant that weighed almost a kilo. Quite naturally, it was called the Jubilee Lemon in honor of Lenin's anniversary. The lemons may be the stars of the show, but there are also bananas, papayas, and a living candy store in the shape of a Brazilian pineapple guava tree. Pretty good. Cheaper than a chocolate bar. And some of the most unusual oranges I'd ever seen. Hmm. I feel a bit like the man from Del Monte here. You say yes? 
And once I'd tried everything else, there was really only one thing left to do. So, let's see if these taste as good as they look. Right, you get an amazing smell as you cut into it. Let's, let's, oh, that's really bitter. But, yeah, sharp. It's supposed to be the sign of a really fresh lemon. It turned out that my last day in Magnitogorsk was going to continue to have a fruity theme. Because after I'd spent the morning with lemons, I was spending the afternoon with peaches. But these guys certainly don't grow on trees. These are the Oxford peaches. They're a Magnitogorsk institution, and in 2008, they went to Germany, entered the World Formation Dance Championships, and won. Their moves were all perfectly in sync, but there did seem to be some difference of opinion over why they'd been called Oxford Peaches in the first place. One guy told me that peach baskets had once been used instead of basketball nets in Oxford, but I think he may have been confused. Bizarre name or not, these are some seriously talented kids, and their choreographer puts them through their paces every single day. It was obvious to see that everyone just loved what they were doing, but I was wondering what was left for them now they'd won the biggest prize of all. MTV, maybe? So you've been together for about three years. You've already become world champions. Where do you go from here? Do you stay in Magnitogorsk? Do you go to different countries? Do you go to Moscow? Do you come to theatre? Is it music videos? What else can you achieve? I don't think any of us are thinking about music videos or stuff like that. We don't want to think about the sort of money that might come our way, because if we do, our performance will get worse. I don't think anybody gives any thought to it. Now we simply dance for the love of it. And they were willing to teach a passing journalist a few moves. Now, this is why if I ever do dance, I dance in badly lit nightclubs where people might not see me or I might just not be the worst dancer in the room. But when you're surrounded by people who could easily be in the next Buster Rhymes video, I think it's best if I just slink off gracefully. And I just had time for one last look around the city before heading to the airport. I have to say that Magnitogorsk has surprised me. I really was expecting a huge industrial eyesore, but it's actually a clean and prosperous modern city. And it may be one of the coldest places I've been to in Russia, but it's also got some of the warmest people I've met here. And as for my dancing, well, that's never going to be the same again.